better than your currency. Splurging millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency, my money in the private. Thanks for tuning in, in again this week, guys and girls. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how many properties do you need to have in order to be financially free. Uh, quite often, people come to us uh, when I'm doing map sessions or writing into the, the office and speaking to my team about, you know, I want to buy a property, I want to have three properties, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, is it possible to do this? And um, I quite often have very different conversations with uh, with investors on the phone when I was speaking to them regarding, you know, strategy and, and building a portfolio. Some people think they can only buy one or two properties and sometimes people want to have 20 or 30 properties. Sometimes people think it's possible. Some people think it's possible and they can't do it. So how many properties do you need to have in order to be uh, financially free? So I always try to look at it and reverse engineer, you know, sort of working out where it is that I'm trying to go to and where it is I am at the moment and bridging that gap to work out, you know, what sort of steps and what sort of properties and what sort of assets do I need in order to get there. Um, So in short, you know, the average wage I think in Australia is about $1,200 per week which would be about $62,000 per year. So I always try to think, you know, are you trying to replace a 50 grand income, trying to replace a 60 grand income, trying to replace a 100 grand income, trying to replace a 150 grand income, whatever that may be, and then working back from there. So, you know, if you're trying to replace the income of $60,000, then you want to go back and go, okay, $60,000 is $1,200 per week, how do I get $1,200 per week? Because if you're working in a job, you're waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, brushing your teeth, doing your hair, hopping in the train, going an hour to the city, whatever the case may be to try and you know earn that money, that's you physically having to do that work. And uh, at an early point in my life, I was like, this doesn't really make sense. I don't want to be able to do that. Um, you know, I was 16 years old when my dad died of a heart attack and I was like, shit, my dad worked you know two jobs and had to struggle to put food on the table, all that sort of stuff. That, that, that's not what I want out of my life. So I sort of looked at it from a very young age and looked at how can I you know, earn an income? I'm happy to do work, but how can I take that active income that I'm earning from in a job and turn it into a passive income stream? And I, I think you know, in today's conversation, I'm gonna talk a little bit about you know, the difference between buying a principal place and building a property portfolio as well, because a lot of people get stuck and trapped in that uh, mindset as well. So looking at, you know, the first part of how do you replace $1,200 per week? Firstly, if you're earning 1200 bucks a week, you're having to do that and you might have to do it for the next 40 years of your life if you don't have a strategy to replace it. So for me, I always thought, you know, I'll work two full-time jobs if I have to and take that extra cash flow that I've got, save up as much as I can and put it into income producing assets. So I work two jobs. Doesn't mean, you know, if I was to have my time over again, I would probably wouldn't even want to work one job. I'd be more smarter and more diligent about how I built my portfolio. That's certainly, you know, what our investors do in our community uh, to build their property portfolios. But if you wanted to replace 1200 bucks a week, you need to go and find some assets. So if the average rent is $300 per week, you're going to need four properties returning $300 per week to give yourself uh, 1200 bucks a week, which is $62,000 per year. So that would be the first step is that you'd need to have a minimum of four properties uh, bringing in 300 bucks a week. And I know what everyone is thinking there on the watching this video, listening to the podcast, whatnot. They'll be sitting there thinking, yes, Nathan, but that means that you need to have four properties paid outright. Right? And that would be the boring strategy to do that. But minimum, you can't do shit without having four properties that rent for 300 bucks per week. Moving on from that, you know, the first thing is that you could buy four, work hard, pay them off, have them outright. And it's not really that big. Like if you think about it and break it down, if you could buy a property for $150,000 to $200,000, rents to $300 per week, that means you need to come up with about $800,000, $600,000 to $800,000 to buy that property portfolio um, in order to get that income. So paying that off, working hard, isn't really my thing. Um, reality of it is, is if you're going out earning money, paying 30% taxes being extorted from the government in order to pay the state first, and then you get a little bit left over and then you want to pay off your mortgage, you know, you're losing a big chunk of your money. And then what you're doing is you're saving maybe 3% interest rate, which is less than inflation. It's going to be a very tiresome and very long process. So what could be more smarter, 
sort of uh, scenario could be option number two, which is if you need to have four properties owned outright, you could go out and buy eight properties. Eight properties at say 200 grand a piece, if they double from 200 to $400,000, you could sell off four of them and pay out the other four. Then you've got four properties unencumbered. You just need to buy eight, watch them double, do their thing, pay down debt. Um, on that scenario, there's a floor attached, there's a floor with that. And that is, I've never had people call me up and say, hey, Nathan, um, I'm so happy I sold a property, uh, you know, 20 years ago, I bought it for 200, I sold it for 300, made 100 grand, great. Now the things were 600 grand. So buying properties and selling them off isn't really my game because, you know, I understand how inflation works, I know how currency creation works, and I'm all about cash flow. So for me, if I wanted to get $60,000 a year, I would try and push myself to getting, say, 10 properties or 12 properties at Two hundred thousand dollars a piece. Um, you know that'd be you know, maybe two million dollars worth of assets, two and a half million dollars worth of assets, and those assets, if they all rent out for three hundred dollars per week at a neutral cash flow today, you know, that's okay. If you push that rent up by fifty bucks or a hundred dollars, if you've got ten properties at a hundred dollars positive cash flow, that's after council rates, water rates, real estate fees, mortgage repayments. Um, any sort of uh, insurances or stratas that you've got to pay on the property. After all those expenses, if they're positive $100 per week and you have 10, that's 10 properties times $100 positive, that's a thousand bucks a week, there's 52 grand of your income reoccurring. And by having that, you still got the debt, you still got the property, and you still got the cash flow coming through. And what happens over time is that that rent does not stay stagnant. Generally, it moves up with inflation. If it goes up by $20 next year and you've got 10 properties, you've got 20 times 10, which is 200 bucks a week extra cash flow coming through next year. So the real game of being an investor, in my opinion, is not to go out there and try and flip a property or trying to you know, outsmart the market or try and sell the property or trying to work hard to pay it off cash because the more that you save up cash, the higher the price of the assets going up. The simple fact, this is why I always talk about understanding how currency and how, how the monetary system works, is that the more that you save up, you could save up 10 grand to buy a property and the properties go up by $25,000. And that's because they're printing more currency at a more rapid rate than what you could ever save. And that's why savers are losers and you know you don't wanna be into, into having currency. Um, looking at having that asset base, so looking at it from three options. One, buy four properties, pay them out, get 300 bucks a week times four, that's 1200 bucks a week. There's your income. Second one, buy eight properties, watch them double, sell off half, pay out the other half. You've got four unencumbered. Third option, buy 10 or a dozen, push them up by 50 bucks or 100 bucks positive cash flow per week, live off that passive income. That's my uh, go-to, that's my favorite scenario, but everybody's position is different. Everyone's mindset around debt, um, how money works and all those sort of things, you know, fit into their own life, however they see. Uh, the most important part is that if you've got say 10 properties and they double from 200 grand to 400 grand, it's very easy. How often do you see a property that goes up and doubles? It might double in five years, might double in 10 years, might double in 20 years, who knows when it doubles. But if it doubles in the next five or 10 years, you've got $2 million worth of net worth that'll double into $4 million. If you go and work for 40 years at $50,000 per year, uh, the sad reality is, is that $50,000 a year times 40 years is $2 million. So literally, whilst you're out there earning a passive income stream, you know, properties are doing whatever they're doing, assets are rising in value, one person could work 40 years of their life at 50 grand and get $2 million, or you could have 10 properties there that are paying you money each week so you don't have to go to work and then the value of them just in a short 10 year period could double quite easily. And um, I was talking to my mate Daniel recently, uh, some of you may know Daniel, um, used to be part of Be Invested. Um, we're talking about properties that were buying for investors years ago um, that were paying 150, 200,000 in Mount Druitt. So I'm just gonna use this as a bit of an example. Um, 10 years ago, People used to laugh to saying, you're buying these little fibro houses, you're buying a house that's an ex house commission, you're buying a unit in, in Western Sydney, whatever. These things are never going to go up from a hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars. And we used to say to people, you know, buy four of them, buy five of them, buy ten of them, whatever, they double, sell off some, pay out the rest. 
And I looked at them recently and the prices are now selling for eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars So I think back and think, okay, imagine if someone bought them with option number two, they sell them off, pay out their debt, and then we look in 2020, and it might have sounded great on the day, but those assets have gone up even further, you could sell off one property and pay out four properties. Uh, so having a strategy is very important. I use the figure of 1200 bucks a week, 60 grand a year, just in this one occasion um, uh, as a comparison, but you can scale this to whatever size you want. If you want $100,000 a year, you need to find out and work out the equation to get to $2,000 per week. If you want to have 150 grand a year, you're going to need to find $3,000 per week. So $3,000 a week divided by $300 per week rent, you're going to need 10 properties in order to give you that sort of cash flow. So it's a very scalable model and having your property you know, structured, like having a, a business plan around your acquisition of your properties, your, your cash flow of your properties is very, very crucial because most people go out there and they say, okay, I want to buy a house on the high side of the street. I want to buy a house in this location. I want to buy a property over here. It needs to be near the water, whatever the case may be. But very rarely do they go, how does the property help me get to my end goal? And for me, when I'm looking at a property, always thinking about, or any asset or any decision I'm making that's financially or anything in life, I'm thinking about how is this going to help me get to the end goal? How's it going to help me in three years, five years, 10 years time? How's this going to fit in the overall picture? I see people all the time that come to me with properties in their portfolio which aren't that bad of a property, but it's stopped them from being able to service with the bank. And you know, building a large property portfolio, having three, five, 10, 15 properties, is a reason why people get one or two properties in their portfolio. And there's a reason why people get you know, 10, 15, uh, 20 properties in their portfolio. And the reason being is understanding what the banks require from you. Because if you don't have money, you can't buy the property. So firstly, is understanding and identifying, you know, what do you need to have in your portfolio? So if you need to have 10 properties, 10 properties it is. Once you've identified that, it's a matter of working backwards to go, what steps do I need to do in order to get there? Do I need to have deposits for the property? Do I need to get the loan from the bank? And generally it's a mixture of having the capital for the deposit and having the ability for the bank to be able to lend you the money because people screw themselves up. They'll buy an asset which, you know, is negative for the bank and the bank doesn't like it and it hurts them from being able to move forward. So every time I'm buying an asset for myself or for one of my investors, I'm always thinking, how's this property going to get us not you know, from property number one or two, how's it gonna help us from number six or seven? How's it gonna help us for eight or nine or number 10? How's that property gonna play its role in the overall property portfolio and the overall position uh, of, of getting me to where I wanna be? So as an investor, I think it's very, very crucial to you know identify what it is that you're trying to achieve with your property investing journey. And you know, if you're sitting there going, Nathan, I, I don't know how much I'm trying to get, or I thought I'm just gonna buy one or two properties, you'll probably end up in the category of being the people that get one, two or three properties and then get stuck because you don't have clarity on you know what steps you need to take. So build yourself a plan, build yourself a strategy, work out you know clarity as to how I'm gonna get from where I am today to where I wanna be in the future. Um, and scale it. You know, for me, I just wanted to have a humble 10 properties by the age of 30. Uh, when I was 17 years old and 16 years old thinking, okay, I want to buy a property. I used to think I want to buy it cash. But then I saw the boom of the early 2000s when I couldn't sign a contract and I saw properties double and triple very quickly. I was like, hang on a second, I just saved 10 grand, but the market's gone up 40 you can't save that much. So I thought having 10 properties by the age of 30 was a really cool goal and I didn't know how to achieve it. And when I was 16 or 17, I thought, you know, I've got the opportunity here to work 40 years of my life. I'm about to leave school. I can work 40 years of my life and end up, you know, dying of, you know, something and not having the ability to fulfill my life. So I thought to myself, if I could just sacrifice 10 years of my life, work really hard, buy assets, get 10 properties, that'd be really cool. But at the time, of you know the early 2000s, there was no podcasts out there, there was no YouTube, there was no Facebook, there was no one out there you know being able to give that advice. There was no realestate.com, there was no access to tools for previous sales data and all that sort of stuff. So I just thought you know everyone in my family said debt was bad, so save up a lot of money, and I tried to work out a plan of buying 10 properties. And when I bought 
the first one. I'd saved up a lot. And then I tried to buy a second one by saving. I didn't really understand the concept of debt, leverage, being able to scale a portfolio. But the first two properties were working. And I thought to myself, if I could have 20 of these or 30 of these, and I thought it was impossible to get to 10. That was, uh, that was the reality of it is, how am I going to get to bloody 10 properties? I don't know anyone that's got 10 properties. And when I got there, it was like, shit, I don't want to you know, my, my portfolio, my position changed because of my mindset had changed. So initially it was getting 10 properties, paying them off um, and, and living off the rents. Then I realized, why would I want to pay the property off? Because the properties just keep it and going in value. I'd rather buy another 10 properties. If I had to pay those 10 off, I'd rather buy another 10 and get to 20. And then I could have all the extra cash flow. At the start, I didn't realize that rents would rise. So I just thought about it and go, okay, rent's 200 bucks. But I didn't know that the year after I'd go to 210, 220, 240, 250. And I was like, hey, in a second, all these little rental figures are all new money that's coming into my bank account. Um, and then I didn't realize, you know, the ability to be able to pull out equity. I didn't know how to scale things. So there's lots of things I didn't know at the start, which if I had have known, I could have been able to get to, you know, maybe 2000 properties today, not 250 or 300 uh, assets. So I think it's very, very important for anyone that's, you know, starting out investing, or even if you are on the road of investing, to work out what is the end goal, what is the actual plan of what we're trying to achieve here, so you can work backwards in order to be able to get to that result. So, you know, do you need 50 grand a year? Do you need 100 grand a year? Uh, do you need 200 grand a year? How does that work? And what sort of time frame can you uh, comfortably be able to get there? And what sort of assets do you need in your position? If you need help on being able to do that, reach out to my team, um, speak to them about it does. If you need help on this front, you can reach out to my team, 1-300-367-925, email us at admin at beinvestor.com.au. Uh, speak to one of my investor relations managers to see you know, a bit of a discovery session on you know, where you're at, where you're trying to go to, and if there's a way that we can help you get there. Um, as always, if you like this video or like this podcast, give us a like, share it with your friends and family, and uh, remember to subscribe to uh, YouTube, uh, Google, Apple Play, and Spotify. Uh, we'll catch up soon. Have an awesome week. Bye for now. Like Bilal said, man, we stuck in the matrix This my advice, don't care if you take it The dollar back to die, soon to be hyperinflated This my two cents, don't care if you save it Join be decentralized and you will see You've been lied to the whole time and it's the irony Cause they do the exact opposite You become a slave to the system And not your money, all they do is profit There's no conspiracy theory, you better hear me Crypto will set you free before the system does I don't care if you do or you don't But what I'm saying is the truth to the reason you choke I've never been a failure, excuse my behavior Keep talking, haters doing me a favor And you are telling lies, I know what they've been telling you I'm the opposite of Donald Trump of Australia It's amazing, been for the taking My time is never wasted